This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Stick around to find out how you can get 83% off and one month for free. Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and today so much to cover. We've seen the cleanup of the SN1 Starship after last week's surprise explosion. The new SN2 Starship tank structure was rapidly developed to assist in solving the problems with the new thrust puck structure. There's also huge development work going on at the Boca Chica site itself as well. Everything continues to ramp up faster and faster at the site. Along with that, some actual footage from Blue Origin. Yes, real footage of a real rocket component. We of course also had the incredible CRS-20 mission including the 50th successful landing of a Falcon 9 booster and to top all of that off some amazing footage was released by SpaceX on the anniversary of the Crew Dragons Demo 1 launch. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. So yes, unless you have been living under a rock over the last week, you have already heard the news and seen the footage of the SN1 Starship exploding. This occurred a week ago, but you'll be amazed at the progress already underway with the next iteration of the Starship structure. Just to quickly recap on what actually happened with the SN1, the vessel was undergoing an initial test prior to static fire, which would have included the new Raptor engine by SpaceX. Now, we were all looking forward to seeing a static fire, even if the vessel may not have been destined for too much more than that. As it turned out though, the SN1 never actually got the chance to even get to that static fire test. It exploded violently when doing the initial tank pressure tests using what we believe to be liquid nitrogen in the bottom tank and nitrogen gas in the upper tank. Well, exploded as a simplified way of describing it, as Scott Manley described earlier in the week, it exploded, then imploded, and then exploded again. Elon Musk shed some much needed news on the incident, jokingly asking, how was your night? With a reference to the incredible footage, of course, taken by Boca Chica Gal for NASA spaceflight. As always, of course, a massive thank you to the incredible work being done for the community here. A link to subscribe to NASA spaceflight is in the description. Incredible footage lands there before anywhere else. Also, Elon joked that the SN1 Starship was fine, they were just buffered out. Now, a number of people in the comments were suggesting that this test may have been a planned pressure test to find the fail point, similar to previous tank tests. However, this was certainly not the case as we have seen from these tweets from Elon. He sounded quite surprised by what had occurred here. More interestingly were the tweets that followed up here saying that there's a puck structure at the base that takes the engine thrust load. Don't shuck the puck. Now, at first, I wasn't overly sure exactly what component he was referring to here, but as always, the amazing community to the rescue found some quite convincing references to the structure from the Mark I Starship. So the three Raptor engines were mounted to this version of the thrust structure here. Now, in the case of the SN1, there are a number of discussions around suggesting that this component here was actually the thrust puck laying bottom down here. If you have more information on this or have come across any photos, let me know in the comments because we were all quite interested in how the new structure will fit together. As Elon said, SpaceX will be stripping the next SN2 version to the bare minimum to test the thrust puck to dome weld structure under pressure, first with water and then with cryogenic temperatures, hopefully ready to test in a few days. Of course, very shortly after, the SN2 development ramped up into overdrive alongside the cleanup of the SN1 Starship debris scattered around the site. We were already seeing several stacks of rings ready to go, and these were looking even cleaner than the SN1 stack, so it looks like those welding improvements are kicking off already. The bulkhead here was integrated into this ring stack and the entire structure was then flipped. Now at this stage we are assuming that the SN2 will at least start out as a test vessel to do the necessary pressure tests with the thrust puck structure. As far as we've seen throughout the week this SN2 or test tank as it probably should be known is much smaller than the tanks from the SN1. SpaceX here were in the process of building a cut down liquid oxygen tank. We know this because the the middle bulkhead on this is upside down. Normally the liquid methane tank would be above with the bulkhead here inverted the other way. As soon as this tank came together we knew right away that this was a much smaller test vessel. Now there are a number of rumours out there currently that I haven't been able to confirm suggesting that this will certainly be tested to its failure point. Not only that, there are also rumours that the next structure may also be a test vessel rather than the full tank stack we saw with SN1. It's hard to predict at this point until we see some more evidence of that. But if you've spotted anything, let us know in the comments. 
Now during the week we've also seen plenty of progress with other components such as the new nose cone here. There are many iterations to the overall design on the horizon I suspect, not only because of improvements continually occurring in the overall structure of the Starship design itself, but also improvements for the overall method of manufacturing. As Elon also mentioned during the week, there needs to be vast improvements in the production system. Rocket design is relatively easy, making one is hard, and making many is extremely hard. Now we've seen Elon go through the very difficult task of improving production, utilizing a great deal of automation with Tesla and their amazing production line here, just pumping out massive numbers of vehicles. The idea with Starship is to be creating a similar production line. Elon Musk and SpaceX are not just creating a rocket, they are building a shipyard here. By being able to rapidly create hundreds of these Starship structures, they will become cheaper and cheaper to manufacture. As far as I last heard, there were around 300 people employed in this endeavor currently at Boca Chica. It is predicted that there could be around 10 times that number in 12 months time. There is a huge effort being put into the facility itself by a large percentage of that same workforce right now, and we are seeing the infrastructure grow rapidly right before our eyes. The new vehicle assembly building is very close to being complete now, and we see a lot of footage showing the construction work being done here during the week. The sides of that building are rapidly coming together, and they will be finalizing that quite soon, I suspect. SpaceX certainly hasn't been afraid of using it while a new tank structure has been in development either. As we've seen by a lot of the footage shot, SpaceX was actually already using this structure to keep it out of the weather. Keep in mind that this new tent structure has come together quickly after the explosion of SN1 a week ago, so it just gives you a bit of an idea how quickly everything is progressing here. These structures are certainly not small either. Taking a look inside, you can see the scale of them. With this added tent, SpaceX will have more capacity to work on additional Starship iterations at the same time. Now, along with all of this, SpaceX released some beautiful footage from the anniversary of the Crew Dragon Demo-1 mission during the week. On March 2nd last year, the awesome Falcon 9 rocket launched the incredible new Crew Dragon for the first time, which then became the very first American spacecraft to autonomously dock with the International Space Station. Other vessels from the USA have of course docked to the station before, such as the Space Shuttle, but not autonomously like the Crew Dragon last year. That entire mission was flawless, and I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see the real crewed mission coming up in the next few months. That mission is currently targeted for early May from Pad 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. This is a mission that will be a massive milestone for SpaceX and NASA. It will be the first crewed mission to the International Space Station to lift off from America since the final Space Shuttle mission in July of 2011. Just beautiful scenes here as well. SpaceX really do release the most amazing footage. Now, if you would like to know a little more about the Demo-1 mission and the significance of the upcoming Demo-2 mission, I have this more in-depth video for you. And of course, while you're here, please do consider subscribing. There's loads of news with Starship and Starlink coming up, and I'd love to share all that with you. Now, after a lengthy silence from Blue Origin, we finally saw some interesting footage this week within the huge Florida factory. Everything going on here has been very secretive, so it's great to see some real information here. What we are seeing in this video is one half of the new Glenn fairing. The new Glenn rocket in development by Blue Origin is named after the late John Glenn, who was the first American to orbit the Earth. And the design of this massive heavy lift orbital launch vehicle is very ambitious indeed. It's also going to be attempting to reuse its first stage in a similar fashion to SpaceX's reusable boosters by landing on a platform ship in the ocean. So yes, this fairing half is a massive 7 meter or 23 foot wide carbon composite structure. In the video it stated that the fairing is big enough to hold an entire new Shepard rocket, a huge amount. It's claimed that this payload fairing is sized to fit almost 50% more than the next competitor, and it is also the largest contiguous composite fairing ever built. Now, for comparison, the fairing size for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy is just over 5 metres wide, so this is almost 2 metres wider again. I'm wondering if there's any plans to try and recover the fairings from New Glenn similar to what we see SpaceX trying to perfect right now, but it's always hard to know what is really going on due to the very strict secrecy around the development at Blue Origin. That being said, this is actually the first segment of footage I've seen in a very long time from them, so thank you to Blue Origin for actually sharing 
sharing that footage. Please do share more because we'd love to see this progress. So yes, a 7 meter wide fairing is impressive for sure. It's worth noting of course that the diameter of Starship is 9 meters. I'm not certain how payload capacity will compare, but I would think once Starship is actively launching to orbit it will certainly be capable of similar sized payloads to Blue Origin's New Glenn. New Glenn quotes a maximum payload to low Earth orbit of around 45 metric tons. Elon Musk still sounds reasonably certain that 100 tons to low Earth orbit will be possible at some point with the developing Starship. The the whole idea of that of course is that it will be fully reusable as well. So in comparison the second stage of New Glenn and I suspect these very expensive looking fairings will be discarded on each launch. Now over the last 12 hours or so depending on when you watch this video we got to witness the initial SN2 test tank undergoing the pressure test using water which I'll touch on in just a moment. But the big news for the day was the incredible CRS-20 mission. My patrons and I had fun watching this one live in an exclusive stream which was just a blast. This was very likely the final Cargo Dragon mission we will ever see. Now real quick this video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN who have been huge supporters of my channel. Do you frequently travel and use potentially insecure public Wi-Fi access points, perhaps you are sick of your anonymous data being tracked no matter where you are. In these situations using a VPN or virtual private network can provide you with instant online safety. Surfshark encrypts all of the data sent via the internet so that no one can see your passwords, photos, videos and sensitive data. And there are loads of reasons why you may not want internet service providers and network administrators tracking what sites you are viewing. Just one example could be if you have very differing personal views or beliefs from those around you. You can even change which country you're accessing the internet from to unblock content that is restricted geographically. This could include social platforms, external news and of course entertainment services. The internet should be an open hub of knowledge and by using Surfshark VPN you can control what you can see and what data mining services can't see. Now not only that, they are the only VPN service to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. If you would like to support my channel and are also considering a VPN or even changing your existing VPN, go to surfshark.deals slash markers and you will get 83% off and one month for free. With a 30 day money back guarantee there is no risk in trying it out for yourself. The link is in the description below. So yes, this commercial resupply mission was an awesome show. The first stage booster previously launched the CRS-19 mission back in December last year. The Dragon capsule itself also previously visited the space station on two other launches prior, flying early in 2017 and late in 2018. So this is the third and final mission to the International Space Station. Assuming everything goes to plan, the Dragon should reach the International Space Station early Monday. Now assuming everything goes to plan with the new version of the Dragon 2, this is very likely the last Cargo Dragon mission of this type that we will ever see. The next mission will be using the new modified Crew Dragon vehicle in a cargo configuration. That is going to be exciting to see. Beginning in October of this year, all future resupply missions will feature SpaceX's upgraded Dragon 2 capsule. That version will be capable of flying five times, whereas each Dragon 1 was rated to fly just three times. So yes, a huge milestone for this CRS-20 mission, which was the final flight under SpaceX's first commercial resupply services contract. Another massive achievement though was the booster landing. This was the 50th successful landing and interestingly just before this launch Elon finally dropped that little piece of information telling us why the previous booster didn't make it saying that the missed landing was due to incorrect wind data. So we now know a little more about what happened there. After deployment the Cargo Dragon separated for the last time and deployed its solar arrays. These will also no longer be used again with the next version of the Dragon having solar cells covering the trunk rather than these deployable arrays. I've got to say this has been one amazing vehicle. Congratulations to SpaceX for everything achieved here so far. Finally, over to that Starship tank pressure test. Lab Padre's livestream footage captured a fairly uneventful test. That is a good thing though, we didn't need any more explosions. You can see here that water starts venting out of the top during the test. Everything seemed to go successfully, so with any luck over the next day or so, the next test with cryogenic fluid should occur. So yes, an incredible week of news this week, and there is plenty that I haven't included here, so well done for making it this far through the video. Now a huge thank you to my amazing patrons here. 
you are all quite literally turning this dream of mine from a hobby into a business. If you like what I do and would like to join our awesome patrons here, head to patreon.com slash Marcus House. You can interact with me more directly via the exclusive roles in Discord, you can check out some exclusive patron-only content, and you can also have your name listed right here with these other incredible people. You are all quite literally changing my world here. Thank you very much for your support. Of course, a massive thank you as well to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be part of this, follow me on Twitter and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video last week covering the explosion of the SN1 Starship in detail and the events leading up to that. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, content that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.